I'm John Williams, I'm in Grassmore in Chesterfield on the 8th of November 2017 and I'm here to interview Edwin Schmidt. Thank you, this is the third part of our afternoon's interviews. Uh, actually before I go on any further, uh, I'm calling you Edwin Smith but I understand people close to you call you Tat, is that yeah, right? Well, that, that came from my grandfather who was called Tat, and which was passed on to my father when he was young as Tat, passed on to my brother, who was Tat, and uh, then it came down to me. Not many people call me now, there are a few, but not many. Yeah, so it's just like a family... It's like a family nickname. Nickname. Yeah. It's, it's not short for anything. Not then. short for anything, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. And your family call it, do, you, do they, or have I just... No, uh, they call me Edwin, they don't, don't call me Tat, do they? No. No, no, no. 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 When you were playing, what what did your colleagues or your teammates call you? A few call me Tat. Yeah. Yeah, a few. Yeah. yeah. A few call me Tat. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, just how it uh, it comes down through the yeah. through the years. Yeah. We talked in the other two recordings about how you got into cricket and and then obviously how your career progressed and developed and you played for Derbyshire for twenty years. Twenty years. Just towards the end of the career, I was wanting to pick up the story from there, really. You'd obviously had a, a very successful county cricket, took a lot of wickets, scored some you know, significant yeah, well, number of runs. Had a, I did have a benefit in 66. Right. But it was 15 years before I got it. Should I had it 10 years from my cap, I put there 15 years before I got my benefit. To get one after seven years now. Right. You know, it, uh, they always said it was 10 years from your cap. Right. When we was playing. Yeah. So I got my cap 54, so I should have had a benefit 64. Right. Which would have been, I were only 30. Right. Uh, Laurie Johnson, who got his cap in 56, same time as Harold, uh, they decided to give him a benefit. Right. So Laurie got his benefit before mine. Right. And really, and uh, that was another thing I was a bit disappointed about. <laughs> right. That same year, actually, uh, 66. That's when I had got 40 wickets at eight apiece. I was top at national averages. Right. And we played Gloucester at Derby, and it was a spinner's wicket. It had rained. Right. And I was left out the side. And I could never, I've never found out to this day why I was left out the side. Right. Right. I don't know whether Dave knows. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd, I got 40 wickets at eight apiece. Yeah. I finished up, I think I got about 88 wickets that year. And right. I got 100 wickets for the played that match. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, did, what did annoy me? The captain says, uh, you can have a rest and be 12 man. I say, if I'm having a rest, I'm going home. So I went home. Right. But I did stay there, because Alan was... Uh, I think the reason was we played east to west in them days. And there was a gale blowing from east down to the west. And they said, well, Alan Ward will want to bowl at that end. But on the snag, he only bowled three overs, and then Mickey Page was put on bowling off spinners. Right. And I went down. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, that's by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But your, your, your benefit then was in 66? 66, 66 yeah. yeah. What sort of things did you do in that then? Well, we used to run raffles and play, uh, when we were at Roth Sunday, played uh, benefit matches on a Sunday at different, uh, different clubs. Right. Uh, raffles, a dance, couple of dancers and things like that. You know, I had a football match at to uh, to play Cross and Danesmore against. Uh, oh, I'm trying to think. You manager at, you manager at Derby County. Oh, Tim Ward. Tim Ward, who was manager of Derby County, had eleven old players, and we had a benefit match against those. Right. And uh, that's how you raise the. Yeah, uh, a bit of a bit of cash. Yeah, so that and that obviously was towards the end of your career, but you still played another four or five years after your benefit, didn't you? I then? played up there. I finished in seventy one. Yeah, seventy one was my last season, and then I took uh, Dennis Smith retired, and I took uh, over the coach's job till seventy four. So decision to retire was that something you took or not really? No, was it? Uh, because I. Uh, <laughs> When I, let's put it this way, they saw Ben Cat on. Uh, 
and I signed Jeff Miller. Right. Just a few said didn't say they didn't rate him, but I signed him up. And I, when I was coach, I still played as pro in the Yorkshire League, and I got looking round for players. And John Walters, or I got him signed on. He, he had to finish through a bad back after three years. But that '71 season, when I played with Norton Oaks as pro, I uh, I topped the. Uh, in fact, I broke the record in the Yorkshire Council League at 99 wickets at six apiece. Right, and I'd I'd just finished county cricket. So, yes. Really, when they signed Ben on, and like Jeff Miller, I could have played for another three years. Right. And probably done what they did, got the 70 wickets or 80 wickets. Because mm. you and felt physically I was, fit I was, enough. Oh, yeah, yeah, fit enough, yeah. 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 And yeah. I suppose, at the risk of being controversial, spin bowling doesn't take it out on your body as much as fast no, bowling, no, does it? No, it? no, yeah. no. In yeah. fact, I always used to think that I, I always probably bowled better when I got a bit tidier. Right. You know, you... You relaxed a bit more and probably bowled it a little bit slower and yeah. just quick enough that if you hit the stumps, to, yeah, you know. You're, uh, and you, you you know all the guile and the technique that a spin yeah. bowler has well, then, well, don't you? I mean, you yeah. played against these fellas. I mean, there's one Brian Jackson. Have you interviewed Brian? Not yet. He tells us the best story ever, and this was that match at Worcester uh, when we took over as captain. Uh, Dolivier had just come back from the uh, test match and we I'd just got Ormrod out, Alan Ormrod, and Dolivera came in, dressed up with pads, clean pads, gloves, creases in his trousers. He took guard and I'm bowling round the wicket. And I thought, well, I'm not ball a spinner, I'll bowl my arm ball, which I did, and it pitched perfect. Leg and middle, and carried on, and knocked his flattened his off stump first ball. Brian Jackson says, "When crowd, when he were walking out, they were clapping there." He said, "When you knocked his off stump out, you could hear a pin drop." <laughs> <laughs> it's a good story. Yeah. Brian tells that story regularly. Yeah. Oh yeah, and that was second inning. He came on, and he smashed me into railway embankment for two sixes. <laughs> <laughs> Cricket does that, doesn't well, it? Well, yeah. this is this is how it goes. Yeah. I mean, you you remember the good balls. I mean, the old song about Shane Warne bowling yeah. Gatty when it pitched outside like something knocked his off out. Yeah. Well, I did that to John Adrich, left hander. Uh, sorry, pitched it outside leg stick, and he went forward, and it turned and knocked his off something out. Right. But they don't mention anything about that. Just Shane Warne because he, was, <laughs> you know, and that one which I bowled Dolivier. I mean, I bowled a few arm balls, but that was one. That's the best one I ever bowled. That's the one that stays oh, with you. It, as being it just your went best, your best like that, one pitched sort of and thing. just yeah. carried on straight. Yeah. And he played for it to turn and come on to him, and it flattened yeah. his off stump. Yeah. yeah. But these are these are things you you remember. Yeah. You know. Mm. But uh, so, I'm, I'm just I'm just rang someone today. Uh, he used to play with Derbyshire. He's not in a very good way. Bert Richardson, Bert yeah. Richardson, he played with Eric. Yeah. And I've been on about ringing for weeks, haven't I? Gene found telephone number, so I rang his, his partner. And uh, just to let, see how we were. And I said, well, tell, tell him Derek's so died. Uh, that's if he's, because I think he has to have 24 hour care, so I don't know whether he's got dementia or whether or not. But I thought, well, I'd let, it, let her know, because she used to come to the, Ex players deal with him, you know, and he'd played with Derek in the 49, 50, 51 season. Mm. Right. Um, come, come, coming back to the sort of the, the, the retirement then, and then, and then, you, as you said, you took on the coaching role with some somebody retired from coaching, so you took on that. that... I took it on for three up to seventy four. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a decision to take on for three years, was yeah. it? Yeah. I or, or just did it. Uh... I didn't have a contract. Right. So... And when when I did take over, mm. we had the the indoor school at Derby. Yeah. My wife helped me clean the indoor school out because there was that much bird dirt on the floor and Walter was there and I was, put, I was putting broken window panes in where the windows were and wife was cleaning the floor up. Right. And that was when it... Filthy, wasn't it? Oh. Yeah. That was 71. Yeah. Yeah. And think, well, I mean, some of the things I did for the club, really. Mm. I mean, uh, I know they haven't got a lot of money, but... Uh, I used to go to a, one shop in Sheffield and they hadn't got the bath towels, which 
you know. Yeah. And we went and got two dozen, didn't we? Mm. Went to this place in Sheffield and got two dozen. Paid, I don't know what they paid yeah. me from, but they never said thank you or this, that, you know. But uh, I mean, that's beside the point. Uh, but you, you, you were doing the coaching of the youngsters, but you were obviously still playing. I was still playing, yeah. I thought, well, this I was can the still... Yorkshire League, which you were yeah. mentioning. Yeah, well, before. I will say, yeah. the reason I played, I thought, well, the Bassett Law League had dropped off a bit. There weren't many decent players about. I thought, if we can try and find some, you know, yeah. and, and in Yorkshire, there were some good cricketers, you yes. know. Yes, yeah. And, because, uh, I mean, I can remember when we was on the staff, or players coming from for trials and in the indoor school they look world beaters yeah and then as soon as you got them out on a grass wicket yeah yeah it was a different different story yeah and, and you kept playing cricket for a number of years after that then, uh, as well, yeah I played uh, I played in the York I played with North Notes for three three years didn't I mm -hmm. three years and 74 when I finished at Derby as coach Right. I went back to the coal board. Right. I went. Um, I went in the uh, Duckmington workshop stores. Oh, okay. And then into the workshops back onto maintenance and so building pumps and that up again. Right. And that was till we were made redundant. Uh, Eighty-seven. Right. Now oh, wait a minute. Was it? Uh, yeah, eighty-seven or fifty-three. Yeah, we were made redundant. But I did. I played with Chesterfield. For Jim Brailsford asked me to play with Chesterfield, which I did for about two years. And in that time, Kim Barnett came and played with Chesterfield. He'd just come to the, onto the staff at Derby and he came and played with us a, one or two games. Uh, and then I played, oh, with Derby over 50s. Right. And we won the national over 50s competition. Uh, it won't be, uh, I was 58, so it would be. About 92. Right. About uh, 1992, I think we won the over 50s competition. Yeah, we should beat uh, Devon at uh, Exmouth in the final. Right. Uh, and then I finished. Right. The only thing I ever won with Derby was the that competition. Right. And I said, that's it, I, I finished. And then until the, uh, um, when I was 74, uh, grandson who uh, played with Matlock, he, uh, they were playing Darley Abbey at, right. at Darley. Yeah. Darley is it Park, is it? And uh, I'd just been coaching, which I did. I've only just finished coaching, actually, from last year, two years ago. And uh, I just got back Saturday, lunchtime. Having my lunch, phone rings, and it's grandson. He said, Grandad, can you come and play? Right. I said, well, where are you playing? He said, we're playing at Darley Abbey. Right. I said, well, I said, I'm just having my lunch. I said, you start at half past one. Uh, he said, well, opening bowl has gone down with mumps. <laughs> right. We've only got ten players. Right. I said, OK, then, so we got ready, didn't we? Yeah. And we went. And I got there, oh, must have been half past three time. Well, in the Bassett Law League, if you'd been off the field for an hour, you'd got to be on the field an hour before I could bowl. Right. Anyway, when we got to Darley Abbey, captain came up to me, threw, threw the ball to me. I said, I can't, I said, I've been off at field two hours, an hour and a half. Right. Oh, he said, I've had a word with their captain. Right. It's okay. Anyway, I went on to, I got five wickets. Right. And uh, had about three dropped. <laughs> and uh, in fact, I won the, I won, when we had the dinner, the, the cricket dinner at Matlock, he said, Edwin's won't bowl in average but we can't give it to him because he's only played one match. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then I played two games. Right. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was the one, the Saturday. And then on the Sunday, they were playing in this Mansfield Sunday League. And he, he rang me. He said, Grandad, he says, we've only got ten players. So I played two days, Saturday and Sunday. Wow. And... <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed it, but it was a bit much at 74. I was going to say, I bet you, you feel a bit stiff on Monday, <laughs> probably. 74, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I bet oh, you yeah. did. It, uh, yeah. And that, that one which we played at Mansfield, we played, I forget the name of the club we played, but they played in a quarry, like a, like a, uh, all the way round, and you're in like a bowl. And it was absolutely red hot, weren't it, that day? Mm. Oh, it was red hot. Yeah. And um, it, mind you, I'd been told about it, about this 
But uh, mm. as I say, I, I play that. Yeah. Them games. And, but that was. And then yeah. That's it. You've had a long and very illustrious time with cricket, and and successful time for cricket. What what's cricket meant for you? I'd do it again. Yeah. And I'd play with Irishers again. Yeah. Some things might change, but I would have played with Irishers again because I, I always thought that county cricket was made up for players born in the county. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know probably after the war, a lot of a lot of who played county cricket had got a few got killed during the war, and and it was difficult because there were a lot of overseas players came from what a few Australians played. Some came out of the Lancashire League or Australians. I mean, mm. uh, Jack Pettiford, he played in the Lancashire League. Sash Pepper played in there, and they went to... Mm. Uh, Colin McCool played with uh, with Somerset. Mm. Bill Alley, he played with Somerset. And they were, you know... I mean, the, the club cricket was better when I was playing mm. because there was a lot of collieries going then. Yeah. I mean, all the kind of say, like in Yorkshire, all the Coleridge, they mm. all had Coleridge sides, yeah. cricket sides, yeah. like they did in Derbyshire and Notts, and and that's where they used to come from. Yeah. I mean, when they'd been working in on the coal face all week, you used to like an hour, mm. you know, mm. relaxation, mm. and that's where the cricket does come from. I mean, you yeah. you look through at Larwood and Vols and Les Jackson and Cliff Gladwin, they all, you know. Freddie worked in the pit as well, Freddie Truman. I mean, they all came from, from the Colliers. Mm. And now, since all they were gone, mm. the lot of the sides, I mean, like our local side up here, they've, uh, they struggled to get two teams. It's very different. Where they had it? three, yeah. Matlock used to have four teams. Do you enjoy, they've only got one. Do you enjoy watching any cricket now? I go every Saturday yep. well, don't you? For an hour, I go and watch a couple of hours up at local village, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, used to, I watched Grantham, but to when it was nice and sunny, but uh, yes. it weren't very often nice and sunny, you know, because I like to go and watch him play. Yeah. But it's, um, oh, and not many times I miss. No. If it's, that's if it's nice. If it's cold, I'm not. Uh, yeah. But, uh, we don't seem to have the summers like we used to. <laughs> well, I don't think so. It we doesn't feel like it, it, does it? We were on about that the other day. When we used to be off school in the summer, you might get the odd thunderstorm, but it, it used to be beautiful. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but you said you'd do it all again. I'd do it all again, and that's if you'd let me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would because I, 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 I must admit I love playing cricket. Yeah. I did lot, and you know, it's, uh, it's like you say, what's bred in has got to come out, you know. Yeah. I mean, it, all, it was all in the family, all all my dad's, you know, my uncles, they all played the yeah. local side. Yeah. And your um, grandson obviously still plays regularly. Well, he, play, he plays with Matlock. He has yeah. played with Grassmore. He plays a good standard then, doesn't he? <coughs> yeah. He played a couple of games with him uh, yeah. <coughs> a few years ago. Yeah. But he, uh, he does play with Matlock. Yeah. Mm. OK. Well, thank you very other, much. Other, uh, other grandson, youngest grandson, he's, uh, he's into cricket. He plays with... Uh, oh... Uh, ca uh, that castle at Derby uh, begins with uh, Elveston. Elveston. He plays at Elveston, but he also plays hockey with uh, with Beeston. He's oh. uh, playing in hockey. You see, he's in third team, at second team at Beeston. Oh. They're pretty good at hockey. Anyhow, hockey. we've come to the end of our time, so thank you ever so much for all your time and fascinating. Thank you very you much for listening. And my pleasure. I hope it is a I hope it's a good video. <laughs>